Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Egyptology Lessons. So today we're going to talk about uh, something that came out with Google. Uh, this is called Fabricius. So this is an AI learning powered by AI to be able to decipher hieroglyphs for you. So if I may not answer all your questions, I'm just trying to kind of guide you through what this is. So just briefly, so what is Fabricius? Well, let me just say what it refers to. So it actually refers to right over here, George Fabricius. Uh, you can see this on Wikipedia. He is a Protestant German poet from uh, the 16th century. He was the first to actually create the science of epigraphy, uh, where basically translating ancient texts, and he did that with a Roman uh, tablet. So that's just in a nutshell of what he is and why Google has named it after, uh, after, after him. But let's go back to it. So this is Fabricius right over here. Okay, so I'll show you. There's three set. There's two, three sections to it for hieroglyphs. So I'll tell you what is good and bad about it, and so you don't catch up with the hype. So you can actually just um, enjoy understanding what it is for what it's worth. So first thing is, it's basically showing you here. If you go through a lot of the websites, blogs like uh, Engadget, it'll just pretty much tell you what it does. Uh, it's pretty accurate. It starts to learn about your hieroglyphs. So if you start typing in hieroglyphs in a spe specific way, it will eventually remember that at 100 to 98% accuracy. So over here, it says it right there. If you write the word un, let me see if I can highlight that. If you write the word un, which is the symbol for life, uh, five times, and it can determine it in five seconds. So that's how fast it is. But you have to draw that in. So we're going to go through the Fabricius site here to show you how it works. So let's go back to it. So first thing is learning. So you're going to learn a little bit about hieroglyphs. You click on that. I think I did most of this stuff. So generally just kind of explains the six steps it's going to follow. You click on that. Uh, it's good. You'll learn a little bit about hieroglyphs. I think you should do it. Why not? And there's a little fun game at the end. Um, and then basically explains when it was discovered, um, information about you know the discovery, and now it shows you tracing. Now, if all of you know about Resident uh, Assassin's Creed, any Assassin's Creed lovers, Assassin's Creed from, um, what's their name that created it, the game? I forget the company again. Uh, they're very, very popular um, for the Assassin's Creed. They'll come back to me and I'll tell you guys what it is. So the company that created Assassin's Creed was doing the same thing. It's basically trying to involve people to trace the hieroglyphs and give the machine learning the opportunity to learn hieroglyphs. So that's what it was doing. And this is what Google is pretty much doing the same way. So for example, I'll show you tracing, uh, how to begin to trace and determine hieroglyphs. Same thing here, um, Egyptologist, earlier 20th century, and explaining about tracing accurately. So here's for something I did. So for example, I got 100%, it's not hard, I know my hieroglyphs. So this is the word min, right? It's a Senate board, it asks you to trace it. So you draw it with your mouse and you, know, you fill in the spaces and then you click OK and it says it's 100%. If you don't trace it properly, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect like right over here. If you trace it properly, and then I'll say 100%. So that's great. It's learned how you draw hieroglyphs and you move on. Next, they'll do the same thing. I'll say draw a read. Okay, well, you draw a read. That's great. And here it says 99 because it came out of the box. But you can be more detailed and take your time. And see if you try again, it'll give you like little uh, brushes. So you could try again. You can erase. So for example, if I click on that and I go over here and you'll see, I'll just trace it. I'm not going to do it perfectly because I'm, I'm only using one hand over here. So you go like that over here like this and you go over like that. And that's how you learn how to trace. I'm not doing the best job, but whatever. I'm just showing you how it works. And now it checks the results and then it says 100%. Well, that's a read. Perfect. All right, great. You continue. And that says, great job. You did a great thing. So you keep moving again. And now it's showing you about how Google's AutoML helps translate hieroglyphs, over 800 different hieroglyphs. This is another thing that you need to learn. You need to have a sense of hieroglyphs. You need to know your hieroglyphs to be able to do this part. You can't just let a machine decide. But in the future, if enough people do it, then at some point, we don't even need to study hieroglyphs. We'll just like Google uh, Translate, just punch in, take a picture of a hieroglyph text and it'll translate it for you because enough people have drawn the images and gathered the images. So that's how it works. Continuing again, now it shows you drawing hieroglyphs, moving forward, explaining the idea of unfortunate discoveries. Some of the, some of the tombs and copies are damaged, so it's hard to read, so people have to fix the damage. Uh, a lot of archaeologists and Egyptologists have to do that. Uh, here it, so it shows you how accurate it is. So, you know, I drew this. I'll show you. So basically it tells you how quickly can you remember in five seconds the un symbol. Well, okay, well, now it's going to go away in five seconds. 
So this is a section you draw, you know, I try to draw it as best as I can. I'm using one hand because I'm holding the phone and then coming down like that. Let's see how well I did. You check your results. It's kind of out of the box, but it says it's 100% because the AI has recognized the symbol. It doesn't have to be in the box, but it recognized the symbol within five seconds. So that's good. It knows the symbol for on. So you move forward. I did the same thing for the letter N for the water wave. It gave me 100%. The same for HECA, which means ruler. Uh, continue again. N says, great job, great work, wonderful. Now comes over to the hieroglyphs explaining that there are some words that are ideograms like the ray and the phonograms like the word place. So continuing over and it shows you sun and place. That's basically explaining to you the ideas of hieroglyphs, that there's ideograms, logograms, phonograms, determinatives, and on and on and on. Now you move to identifying hieroglyphs. Well, you click on that. That's great. It tells you there's a thousand different hieroglyphs in Middle Egypt. Now, Middle Egypt is very important. We use Middle Egyptian as our reference point because it's considered the imperial style language. It's the highest level of properly written hieroglyphs when it comes to grammatical structure, where all other hieroglyphs from Old Kingdom to New Kingdom to Late Kingdom kind of fall shy. They get too much mixed with other languages and they start breaking apart. People don't maintain proper senses and grammar and that's what happens. So, continuing on. Now it's basically moving you over to identifying the list. So it says, can you identify this list? You say, okay, well, I already did it. It'll just tell you, pick one of the list. Maybe, I don't know if I can do it again, but you click on, this is the letter T. Great, it tells you, wonderful. Oh, this is e, This is Iunu, I know what it means. It means, uh, in, it's a determinative for uh, Heliopolis or Iunu. And you have to pick it from a list that's over here. It's not hard. Uh, and then it gives you 100%. It says you did great. Uh, now it's going to move you, move you to key facts, explaining that Gardner was the first to establish a proper list in 1927. He is our basically Sir Alan H. Gardner. He was one of the famous ones who established the, the list with categories. Uh, he put it, like they said, in 26 categories for us. Uh, now, reconstructing. Now, this is the step that we're going to move into. Because a lot of rain, wind, and weathering, and different people, looters, and what have you, damage many of the hieroglyphs, the AI is asking people to reconstruct it. So using Egyptologists, so skill for any Egyptologist to do. They're asking for Egyptologists and people who know hieroglyphs how to put the glyphs together. Uh, I'll show you that when we get there. So now we're moving over to sequence. So here it's showing you basically, again, uh, machine learning and drawing it in. So for example, it's saying, our machine learning model recognizes your drawing. Okay, well, we'll try that again. So I already drew that in because it was damaged. So I can't, if I can show you, I'll just click erase. See here, it was damaged right over here. I'll, let me just pick the bigger one, right? Over here, you could see it was damaged. This is what they're showing you. So it, the Egyptologists, this is where they come in. Not for anybody who just doesn't really know. I had to fill this section out, the whole bird. See, like this is damaged from a temple wall or papyrus. So if you recognize already the front, then you can pretty much draw out the bottom. So I'm just going to check results. It's not going to be right because I'm not going to draw it. So it's going to tell me, oh dear, you made a mistake. Well, it's okay. It's supposed to be this one. It thinks 53% is this, 36% is that, 4% of this because it's not complete. Okay, why not? We'll try again. We'll go back to this. We'll draw. I'm not going to do a great job. I'm just going to come in. I already know what the glyph looks like. It's a, it's a quail chick, so it's the letter U. I'm just doing it quickly. And even if it's a little wonky, it recognizes it. So check the results and it's gonna go 100%, it recognizes it. So that's the great tool that everyone is gonna to contribute to make the language possible for everybody to learn. Continuing next, so the same thing I did with this one for the uh, word for the Southern uh, Egypt, or it can also represent king. So continuing again, now it says thank you, uh, we appreciate it, now you know how it works. Some key facts about cartouches, learning about cartouches. So for example, can you detect a cartouche? Well, here's an example of what we did. So in this case, it gave me uh, the cartouche of Tutankhamun. So let's have a look at that and see what it does. So over here, it asked me to classify the meaning of it. All right, well, we'll click next. Uh, same thing, put them in order. So here it tells you direction. So sorry about that, let's go back a bit. So it's trying to tell you, do you know the direction of hieroglyphs? Can you tell which is left to right or right to left? Well, you go over here. Uh, if you're an Egyptologist, you would know, or if you know a little bit of hieroglyphs, you know that wherever the animals are facing, that's the direction you go, and wherever the people are facing, or the cobra, or the hand. So you know that this is moving from left to right. You click left to right, then you go next. And the same thing, left to right, and now it's going to go in reverse, going to go right to left. You can see the animals are facing the other way now. 
And there you go, you've achieved it. You're learning a little bit. The final stage here is the cartouche, understanding how the cartouche works. So you go over to this translator, click continue. Uh, again, try to find the words in between and the punctuations and the spaces. So this is Thothmosis' name right over here, the third. Um, so basically trying to understand his name. How do you read it? Well, it gives you a challenge. It says, well, drag and drop the phrases. So let's do that. Let's go drop and drag. So here you have the title of Tutankhamun. This is his personal name. Um, he had uh, five names like any pharaoh after the fourth dynasty. So this is uh, 19th dynasty. Excuse me, 18th dynasty. So... Here it says move them up and down, which way do they go, so on and so forth. So based on how to read his name, you, we all know that his name is not Amun Tut Ankh, it's actually Tut Ankh Amun, that's how they classified it. When in reality it should be um, uh, Amun Tut Ankh. But here you have to start off with the verb. I mean, you have the word, and then you have the adjective. So you have to use the adjective with the, pro, with the noun. So we say living, which is the first one, Ankh. Image, image, which is Tut, of Amun, which is on top, Eman, and then it says ruler of Thebes. So ruler of Thebes, but really it's southern Thebes. So they just didn't say southern Thebes. They don't want to make it complicated. All right, so that's it. And then it says excellent. Like if you don't, you have to just move them in the right order. And then they'll, they'll say, great, you did a good job. You can continue. And it says, well done. And that's how you learn. Now, key facts about the pharaohs, explaining a little bit about Amun and who he is and the different rulers. And then you're done. Once you're done with this, it'll basically move you over to the other two categories. Now it's going to say emojis. So a lot of you think that hieroglyphs are like emojis. Technically, they kind of are like emojis, but not really. They're far more complex. Now, emojis can eventually become like hieroglyphs if enough people use them and the complexity of the language becomes so that we can have ideograms, phonograms, and pronunciations of letters. So let's say the, the smiley face or the word leaf. So we use a rubric. So the leaf can be Lee, and then we can combine it with something else to make belief. So you put a B for the, let's say the word B, so the insect, B, and then you put the leaf with it, and that becomes belief. So we can use that in emojis, but we're not there yet. Not yet. Maybe one day. So now it gets you to the, uh, the place of, guess what? You can type hieroglyphs. Now, on a keyboard using, I think you can download this with Google Play. You can't do it with iPhone, but you can definitely do it on a browser. Um, it may not work on some phones. I've tried for iPhone. It just makes it difficult. Sorry if this camera is being blocked here. Let me just try to get that over there. Now, so you're typing. So for example, you click hello. Well, it gives you the word greetings. Uh, the only thing that I find a little difficult to you, this is the word hail. So some of the hieroglyphs are not accurate. Uh, so for example, if you're just typing basic words, now you can send this, you can add emojis. So for example, the word heart. See the down here, you click on an emoji and it'll come up with the word heart. Let me just get that out. I'm not sure why this is here. It could just be it by itself. Like I'm not sure why it's not writing the word out but there's an example and that's heart. You press enter and it sends the word heart. You can share with friends and send it out to people. So this is the second part of Fabricius. So you're learning hieroglyphs, then you're learning about texting. Um, and let's type a word. Let's say I write the word me. Well, that's accurate. This is a determinative for me. This is a sitting person. We usually write that. Uh, what about the word I? Yes. Now, this is the word you, so this is actually incorrect. Uh, it's the word I am. So you see, this it's not 100% accurate. This should be the word I am, and this is a suffix pronoun. Um, so it's not written, it's not supposed to be written that way. Let's try the word for, um, let's say something simple like life. Well, there it is, Anh. So this is the correct word for life. Uh, so that's how it's written. So. That's correct because this is a very common word. But when you start getting into words like, let's try the word sky. Does the word sky work? Not really. Now, there, yes, yeah, sort of, but not so because the word, generally the word for sky is pet. Now, remember, like English and any language, there are synonyms. Just one English word, one hieroglyphic word is not just written in a single way. It can be written in multiple ways because they had like synonyms. You can't just write the word pet in the same way over and over again, it kind of defeats the purpose of the language and does not make it creative. So there you go. So you can use this hieroglyph, you can type. Um, let's try one more word and that's pretty much it. What's the word for king? Well, I'm not sure why ini is there. That's 
not really accurate, uh, but again, let's try Pharaoh. Let's see, I'm curious to see what Pharaoh looks like. Pharaoh. Yes, now that's perfect. Pharaoh means pera. I wish they could put the transliteration so you know the exact pronunciation of the word. Uh, pera means great house, so that's what Pharaoh means. Much like, much like, for example, in the United States, you have the White House. So the White House, it's the same thing, great house. Nobody said Pharaoh, this is a Greek word. Uh, corrupted word from para, so it's not really the same. So there is pretty much what I was wanted to show you. Um, so yeah, so you can do a little texting there and have a little fun with that. Now, don't again, not 100% accurate. Don't get too deep into it, uh, but that's pretty much what it is. Now let's get to the real nitty gritty. If you really want to learn hieroglyphs, you really want to contribute, let's go back to the third section. Now this requires some background in hieroglyphs. You need to be able to understand temple walls, coffins, texts, to be able to understand this. Now, what Google is telling you with the Fabricius is they're asking you to contribute uh, because it's too much of a task for a computer to do everything on itself. It's asking all of us to add and contribute to this. So this is basically showing you their software tool on how to be able to extract words. Um, it shows you a start a project or watch a tutorial. You can watch the tutorial, like for example, it says start a project. Okay, well, now it tells you choose a file. Well, let's see if I choose a file. Well, I'm gonna use the, the Unis image, right? So from the Old Kingdom, from the uh, hieroglyphs of the pyramid text of Unis here. So what I'm going to do is just pick this one for example, okay? So this is an example of hieroglyphs that are not easy to read. So let's say we pick this one section. Okay, you can zoom in, it shows you that these are the hieroglyphs and that's King Unis' name. And then you put a title and name information and anonymous and so on. You know, I'm just gonna do whatever. And basically you can create your own page on Google and you would be that author and you would be you could translate. You could become such a big contributor that people would recognize your name and reach out to you and ask you questions and so on and so forth. Okay, so you're about to create. It can explain to you how to begin. Well, you can go over here and extract a section. Let's say we'll go over here and I'll just go over there and I'll extract a section and something like that. Okay, great. Now you have a threshold, that's wonderful. You can click on invert um, or you know activate. So things like that. So it will capture the word. So something like this. You say, okay, well that's great. And then you move on. Once you've accomplished that, you move over here, generate number two, and so it'll generate it for you. Now you need to be able to draw those words in. You need to be able to break this apart. Now if you don't know hieroglyphs, this is very difficult. So this is where the hieroglyphs come for the Egyptologists, to be able to break down the word, analyze it, annotate. So basically you're gonna draw it in and write a little bit about what it means so that machine AI can learn. Can learn, I'll show you here, if I can zoom that out again, not sure why I did that. So the machine AI can learn. I'll go back, maybe it's just corrupted like that. Okay, so it's okay. So the machine AI can learn, I think I have to do plus. Yeah, like that. So the machine AI can learn these hieroglyphs. Once it learns these, then it can recognize the others and on and on and on and on and the hieroglyphs are learned by AI. So AI will teach us the language without having to open a book or read anything. At some point, you can even hold your camera or phone or device, add a hieroglyph on a temple wall when you're visiting Egypt or online if you're at home, and it'll tell you what it says if, if enough people contribute. So that's Fabricius right over there. Uh, that's pretty much the, the creation of Google and what they're trying to do to uh, assist you guys uh, to learn better hieroglyphs. Uh, it's a little complicated at some, at some sections, but overall, it's, a, it's an enjoyable thing to learn and something new to do. Uh, I wish them the best. I think this still needs a lot of work, but overall, excellent work uh, from their end, what they're trying to accomplish here. Um, let me see if I can go back to what it is. No, that's Fabricius. Okay, never mind. So, yeah, so there you go. I'm trying to get back to the main page. I guess I'll have to type it again. Okay, that's fun. Not sure why it's doing that. All right, so Fabricius, you just type Fabricius and it should come up. I'm not sure why it's not. Fabricius. Google, Google Translate, like that. So you go over here, right there, 
and you're back. So there you go. So you can play a little bit with the play and then you can, that's a little difficult I find and you can learn a little about hieroglyphs. So that's the Fabricius guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned a little bit about what the Fabricius is of Google and a little bit about how it works. So glad you enjoyed. Sorry if I'm talking really fast. I'm just kind of skimming through it as quickly as I can, but you should try the learning section. That kind of will be fun for you to try. All right, everyone, take care. Thanks for watching.